In today's video, we are going to compare the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro X with the MacBook Pro 14. The MacBook Pro 14 has been my main device for the past year, while the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro X I got in a few months ago and it has been competing with the MacBook Pro for my attention as my main laptop for all my different use cases. The configurations I have are relatively different though. I got the M1 Pro CPU with the 10 core CPU version of it. And I have the i5 version of the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro X. Regardless of what version you get, the price difference is quite significant. The starting price of the MacBook Pro is around 2400 euros, when the starting price of the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro X is roughly a thousand euros. So you have around two and a half times the price when looking at the MacBook Pro, and that is for the starting model. This one is even more expensive at around 3000 euros. So that is something you really have to take into account when it comes to picking which one of these devices that might be the best for you. A lot of people usually comment when I make a comparison like this that you can't compare apples to pears like you're doing here because this is such a cheap device in comparison and this is a super expensive device. But I think it's a pretty fair comparison. These devices are very similar in most aspects and Macs have always been more expensive than PCs. So this is, I think, one of the better comparisons I could make with laptops that both look the same, feel pretty much the same, and have almost the same features. I really hope that you will get some value out of this comparison, and if you have any other questions about it, please let me know down in the comments below, and I will make sure to answer as quickly as I can. Here we have both of these beauties side by side, and let's talk a little bit about the main similarities of them. They are both 14 inch devices, with 16 by 10 aspect ratio screens. They have a really high quality feel, and I think this is one of the main things about them. They look somewhat similar, although the design choices are slightly differing because it is Mac and it is a PC, and they have a very similar weight. Actually, let's check out the weight difference right away. The Lenovo weighs in at 1436 grams and the MacBook Pro weighs in at 1600 grams, exactly. They both have great speakers, great displays with a 120 Hz refresh rate and really nice trackpads. On top of that, they have a really similar port setup with several USB-C ports in the case of the Lenovo, you have two USB-C Thunderbolt ports and then one HDMI port. And then you have two USB-C Thunderbolt port and a power port with magnet together with a 3.5mm headphone jack on the MacBook Pro. And on the other side, as you can see, you have the switch for the webcam on the Lenovo. Then you have a 3.5mm headphone microphone combo jack and a regular USB-A port plus the power button. And on the MacBook Pro, you have a full-size SD card reader, another USB-C Thunderbolt port, and an HDMI port. The main difference, as you can see, is that on the Lenovo, we have a regular USB-A port. Something that comes in handy when using legacy devices that haven't switched over to USB-C yet. On the other hand, on the MacBook Pro, we have the SD card reader. Something that always comes in handy for me, that makes a lot of videos, and probably for a lot of other use cases as well. So neither of these port setups are ideal, but both of them are really good. My main use cases for these devices have been for work. I use them both in the office, when I'm on the go, mainly on trains, but could also be in cafes, and I use them in my home office in Stockholm. With the Windows laptop, the Lenovo, I have done an occasional bit of gaming, but it is not one of my primary interests right now. So these have been traditional laptops with office work as well as video editing for me when using them. Another thing that is really similar is the size of the laptops. As you can see when placing them side by side like this, we have a bit of a wider size to the Lenovo. But that is compensated by the MacBook Pro being a bit thicker compared to the Lenovo. 
The reason for that extra width in the Lenovo is that it is actually a 14.5 inch device. Both devices come with really solid USB-C charging bricks. To the Lenovo, you have this really nice 100 watt USB-C charger with a long enough cable to really use it for most occasions you can want to use it for. And with MacBook Pro, you also get this really solid USB-C charger and the wattage of it depends which of the models you get. The eight core version has a bit of a smaller and not as powerful charger. And this is the 10 core version, which comes with a bit of a beefier charger. I typically use this together with a pretty random USB-C cable as the device doesn't come with a USB-C cable in the box. Let's see if the laptops can be opened with one hand, starting off with the MacBook Pro. That is a very simple task. And for logging into the MacBook Pro, there is no facial recognition with a webcam. So you need to tap the fingerprint button for it to log you in. Next up, let's try with the Lenovo device. That is also a very simple task. And the Lenovo device will now look for my face. I was a bit too far away, so it takes a little while, but it's usually a very fast method of logging in. If you don't want to use facial recognition, you can use it with a password or a passcode, but it does not come with a fingerprint reader, at least not the SKU that I am on. Let's have a good listen for coil whine as well as fan noise when they are in this idle state. In the MacBook Pro, there is absolutely not a single sound coming from it right now. It is an idle state, but it has a few browser windows open with a bunch of tabs open in them. There is no coil wine whatsoever, and there is no fan noise. The same thing goes for the Lenovo here. There is not a single piece of coil wine, and there is no fan noise whatsoever. However, when it comes to fan noise, this is one of the first parts where the laptops begin to differ from each other. When I start up the Lenovo laptop, usually it has a period of about a minute or so when it is giving off fan noise. Then that fan is slowing down and then I typically don't hear it at normal use. When I use it for a heavy task, then it will give off some fan noise, but it is very minor never high pitched and never annoying. So it's actually pretty decent in terms of fan noise, much better compared to other PC laptops that I've tried recently. The MacBook Pro is a true star in terms of performance in silent modes. So basically it doesn't matter what you throw at this in terms of powerful tasks, it will chew through it without making a single noise. When on that topic, one of the most important things I know people care about is battery life for a laptop. And they also differ quite a lot in these terms. I have gotten really good battery life out of the Lenovo when I'm on minor tasks, like when I'm not using it very powerfully, then I can get like seven or maybe even a little bit more hours battery life out of it. But as soon as you kick up to a more power hungry task, the Lenovo really starts consuming the battery quicker. And one of the things that I find truly amazing with my experience with the MacBook Pro is the ability it has to run a super power hungry task, like a video editing project or some heavy software, and still not consume a lot of battery. I have been doing like a three hour video project from beginning to finish while being on the train, while being on battery power, without hearing the fans and then still have 55, 60% battery left when I'm stepping off the train. This is a kind of experience I've never really had with any other laptop. And I think this improved every single workflow that I normally use my laptops for. In terms of upgradability, these are not the strongest contenders. Macs are notorious for not being upgradable, but also the Lenovo is not a very upgradable model. It has an SSD that you can change, but that is pretty much it for upgradability. 
However, the SSDs are really fast in both of the devices, so I think you're going to be really happy with the performance of the SSD if you decide to go with one of these machines. Let's talk a bit more about the screens, because they are two of the stars of the show when it comes to these devices. The screens are 16 by 10 aspect ratio and a roughly 3K resolution. You have a very good brightness in both of them. And I actually never use them on max brightness, but if you turn them all the way up, as you can see there, you get a really solid brightness level. It's definitely two devices that are usable in outdoor environments or very bright indoors environment. The MacBook is because it has this sheer backlight in the display that makes it possible to use wherever you want. And the Lenovo has it because it has really good backlight in combination with a matte screen. So that is something that they differ on, the matte versus glossy. They also have great color reproduction. And in these two devices that I have, there's literally no backlight bleed whatsoever. That's something I am not used to experience in laptops and something that of course is a huge plus. On top of that, they are both 120 hertz screen. So you can really get some solid smooth experiences out of using these two screens. Let's have a more close up look on the trackpads of these devices. MacBooks have been very known for having large and very well functioning trackpads for a long time. This is no exception. This trackpad is super nice to work with. It is one of those trackpads that actually doesn't have a proper click to it. The click is simulated with a little vibration. And it has two levels of that. So once you just tap and then you click and then you press a little bit harder and it gives that extra haptic feedback. And this is a very well working solution. The Lenovo laptop has a little bit of a bigger trackpad compared to the Mac, which is something that is fairly unique for a PC device on the market right now. It has of course got the soft click and it also has got a regular hard click. Both of them work really well, as well as the tracking capabilities of the trackpad as a whole. I have had no problems using the trackpad at all, and no rattling noises or annoying sort of trackpad issues that could come up with some Lenovo devices. It definitely hasn't done in this one. The trackpad experience also really adds to the quality feel of the laptops as a whole. And while we are at it, let's talk a little bit about the keyboard experience, because this is one place where I feel like these laptops differ from each other. I have a bit of a hard time explaining what it is, but with this Lenovo device, I cannot type properly. And I've tried using it over and over and over and over again for typing, and I end up never getting up to my normal typing speeds on it. The feeling I get from when I'm using it is that the keys are a little bit more spaced out than what I'm used to. So I constantly end up hitting the wrong keys in combination with the fact that I find they have a little bit of a glossy, slippery almost feel to them. So my fingers don't really stop when I want them to stop. This is of course very subtle and a very personal experience and I'm sure not a lot of people will share my exact opinion on this, but I would definitely share how I feel about it because I'm not comfortable typing with it. So when I have used the Lenovo device, I have definitely used an external keyboard pretty much all of the time. With the MacBook Pro, it is a very different story and the keyboard is one of the better keyboards I have ever typed on. I've gotten very used to typing on this and I would say I'm pretty much at the same speed with this keyboard as I am with my mechanical keyboard that I use in my desk setup. This is a typing test of the keyboard of the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro X. And this is a typing test of the keyboard of the MacBook Pro.
Here is a speaker test of the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro X. And one thing you should remember here is that you really need to switch on the audio profiles in Lenovo Vantage. If you don't, you have the tiniest sound I have heard in a long time. Let's first listen to it before you switch on a proper audio profile. Just because I always wear a smile, like a dresser. That is maximum volume, and now we are switching the audio profile on. And that is the max volume with the audio profile music chosen in Lenovo Vantage. The speakers in the MacBook Pro are powerful enough to fill up a medium-sized room and it's very seldom that I use them on full volume. But for comparison purposes, here they are at full blast with the same song. It is hard to do much else than appreciate the wonderful sound quality and volume that the MacBook Pro is able to produce. It is for sure the best laptop speakers I have tried since I started reviewing laptops. I am not a very big media consumer, but when I consume media occasionally, I think these devices are both very, very good. The exception is that the Lenovo device is not able to fill a room properly when you play music through the speakers. So if you, for example, want to bring it on a trip, put it in a hotel room and use it as a main speaker for like listening pleasure, this is not a great device for it. And the MacBook Pro is super solid in that regard. So you can definitely use it instead of having a portable speaker. There is no issues using the Lenovo for regular tasks, office tasks, watching videos and movies and stuff like that. But when you want to pump up the volume, that's when it lacks. This is the webcam and microphone of the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro X. And as you can see, this is a very high quality webcam. It is a full HD webcam, which I am so happy they finally put in a PC laptop. And it really makes a difference when you are on video calls and similar. I am a big fan of the way this webcam works. And this is the quality of the webcam and microphone in the MacBook Pro. I thought when I got the laptop that this webcam was a really good one. And it is, don't get me wrong. It is a full HD webcam, it has super solid brightness, it has a great microphone that I think is usable for pretty decent recording situations even, when you don't have a proper microphone like that. but. It is just a little bit washed out and not as sharp as the one in the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro X. So I really give the win in this round to the Lenovo device. I'm not going to go too deep into the performance of the devices because there are so many different SKUs that you can get. And for example, you can get the Lenovo device together with an RTX 3050, which will boost the graphics performance by a proper, proper level. And that is something that you can't get in the MacBook Pro. You also have the opportunity to plug into external GPUs with Thunderbolt. And primarily that is something that works with Windows. However, I tried doing this with my external GPU from Gigabyte and I had no success with it. So I'm not sure if this is not yet compatible with Windows 11 or if it is about the Lenovo device per se. The configurations I have is the 10 core CPU version in the Mac and I have the i5 CPU in the Lenovo. And this is maybe not a completely fair comparison because I'm using a very, very powerful CPU here and I'm using the base model in the Lenovo. But I have been super impressed with the performance of this i5 that is in the Lenovo. So I thought we'd run 
one Cinebench R23, 10 minute loop, on battery power, we put this one in performance max, this one in its regular power mode, because you can't change it, and then we see how they perform. During the test, I will also be checking them temperature-wise for fan noise and just seeing how they behave overall. We are closing in on the test right now and the MacBook Pro has not been making much noise, although there has been a slight fan noise on. On the hottest part of the keyboard area, it is around 36 degrees. The Lenovo device has not been making almost a single noise at all. And it is also staying very, very cool at around 30, 31 degrees at the hottest point. The test result now in the Lenovo was 6,633 points. But when I tested it in max performance, when being plugged in, when making the review for this, it got 9,511. The MacBook Pro, on the other hand, it scored 12,220. But keep in mind that is the M1 Pro with 10 cores, so it's not the base model. That is it for my review of the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro X and the MacBook Pro 14. I think these devices are both really good. They perform so well in the different tasks that I want them to perform in. And there are a few things that are caveats with both of them. In the MacBook Pro, you are missing out on a regular USB port, which is something that has disturbed me at times. In the Lenovo device, you are missing out on a proper SD card reader, and there is not even a micro SD card reader to compensate for it. I am personally not a huge fan of the keyboard in the Lenovo, so when it comes to typing, this is not my device of choice. When it comes to plugging into office setups, this one supports one cable with MST, so you can plug it to one monitor and then daisy chain to a second one. That is something Mac OS is not supporting, so this will never be used with a one cable setup for me if I don't invest in a very expensive Thunderbolt monitor setup, which I kind of looked into but then kind of gave up on because it would be so much more expensive on top of the really expensive price of the Mac from the beginning. This one should work with Thunderbolt docks to be able to give it more power, but I have had some issues running it with Thunderbolt docks, which is a pity because it's one of the use cases I had intended for the Lenovo device. So which one do I pick in the morning if I both have them placed on my kitchen table and I only get to pick one to bring to the office? Well, when I have both of them, it's very, very easy for me to say that I will always pick the MacBook Pro. And this is for sure the best laptop I have ever been using and the best laptop I have ever been reviewing on this channel. This is so good that I kind of stopped hunting for a better laptop when I realized how much I like this one. And that's one of the reasons why there hasn't been that many laptop reviews in this channel during the last year. I just have the laptop that I want currently, and until this one wears out and I really need something else, I think I'm gonna keep using this and be pretty happy with what it performs. However, I know a lot of people are interested in Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro X, so I wanted to get it to be able to provide review content with it. And I have used it, and I really do like it, I really do recommend it. If you're choosing between buying one of these devices, I can thoroughly recommend both of them. If you have the extra money to spare, for sure go for the Mac. But if you are looking for something that will not bust the bank, please do consider the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro X. It is an excellent device. I'm W2Best. I make in-depth gear reviews and tutorials, and I will see you in the next video. Have a really nice day. Bye-bye.